Hey everybody, welcome to Sung's Garage. I'm Sung, and this is my co-host, Racer M. We're here with the lovely Jen Yamato from LA Times uh, to talk about the hashtag Justice for Han, where it came from, why she became part of it, and why she felt like it was important. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. The Justice for Han hashtag, which is now like a huge hashtag on social media, and has been for, I would say, the last few years pretty strongly, um, is so much, like, I am not here to, to take credit for any of that, but I am gladly uh, a part of what was and what became, like, this grassroots fan movement to see this character that you originated, this character that so many people connected with in a very, very big franchise with many, many characters. Yeah. Um, but to see that character given uh, sort of a, a do, given respect in a way that I think um, is really special to see. It's special to see why people reacted so strongly to that. Um, why do you think that is, Jen? Well, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it from your perspective, because you're both inside and outside of that, right? In a, in a very unique way, but I think people connected so strongly to the Han character from Tokyo Drift on, but certainly when he came back into this franchise. And concurrently, that franchise exploded more and more globally. And I think what Justin did as director, weaving that character into the heart of the franchise was really smart and really genuine, I think. And I think that's what people connected to, is the emotionality that Han represented within that franchise. He's also, I think, one of the most prominent Asian American characters that we've seen in any franchise of that size, certainly. And to see him go was like, actually, it's funny, because like the way that Tokyo Drift happened chronologically with the rest of the franchise is so ingenious and so obviously unplannable from the start, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh <laughs> I think people just wanted to uh, uh, hold that character in their heart in a way that felt satisfying and to see what appeared to not be satisfying come retro like come come subsequently to that character's legacy mm -hmm. felt like off it felt counter to what that franchise had come to represent to a lot of people mm. I, f I, I i looked um I, tr I looked up to see when it really took off as a hashtag and it was really only in the last two years like 2017. um where did it start i think it, i think it started on twitter oh. And I think it started specifically in response to where the franchise went with certain characters who were revealed to be responsible for Han's death, um, in, which was retconned um, in Fast Six. At the end of Fast Six. Mm -hmm. uh, because people wanted to like let Han, the character, be at peace, right? Yeah. Now, what's your take on it? Uh, I actually still remember between finishing the game and Fast 4, Justin being like, can you brainstorm some ideas? Why would we bring Han back? And I never even thought, like, let's just put it in the past. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to rack my brain. It's like, all right, let's just throw everything at a wall and stick. But it was cool seeing you back there, but, like, that button... It seemed really definitive. And at the time when I saw Fast 6, I was like, oh, that's cool that there was like more to it. But as far as I was concerned, I'm like, you look pretty dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, all this stuff I just found out about yesterday. I didn't know you were in this. So I was just as shocked. Yeah, because yeah. we can talk about Fast 9 because this is actually released after mm -hmm. everyone is going to know that I'm in it. So. Mm -hmm. But well, what, what can you say about that experience of bringing Han back, not just for four, five, six on, but... Uh -huh. There but is like a scene in Seven that I did shoot that people don't know about. That I did a scene with uh, Vin, Dom, and Letty, mm -hmm. and this is when James Wan was directing, mm -hmm. and we, I went to Atlanta. Me and Gal actually went to Atlanta 
to shoot separate scenes to do to there were flashback scenes. There was a scene where Dom and Letty actually are married. Like it, I'm at their wedding, and I'm the witness. I'm the only witness, which I didn't understand. That, but I think the reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I have this because you're old, like your family. But, but, okay. but, yeah, but it was weird because I had this old film camera, mm -hmm. like you know the old high eight right film camera, and I was like, "What is this? Like, was this like in the like the '40s?" Because Han was a <laughs> lifetime <laughs> cinephile. Okay, yeah. Just, yeah. we never had time to reveal that side of his life. But we're in like the Dominican, right? Mm -hmm. and, but we shot it in a cemetery in Atlanta, in the cemetery. Wait, wait, they got married in a cemetery? No, the, the scene takes place in the Dominican uh, Republic, oh. but we shot it in mm, a cemetery in Atlanta that, that played as the Dominican like chapel, right? Um, so that didn't make it, though. Mm. And I think the reason is, is Jeff Kirschenbaum on set in Fast 9, he was telling me that he had seen that scene and he protested that scene being in the movie because the wig was so bad because I had short hair. I was doing this show, right, called Gang Related, and I played cop, so I had this, like, cropped hair. So I had to make a wig. And they did it in a rush order in L.A., and then when I went to Georgia, the wig looked like alfalfa sprouts on my head. <laughs> I didn't, it did not look like Han. It looked like Han was homeless. Or Han? <laughs> yeah, like him. Him. So we're going to talk about fan fiction. Well, yeah, I, okay, look, I am not so, so, such a specific kind of fan that I've written fan fiction myself, but I would love to hear the kinds of fan fiction you've gotten over the years about Han. Like, is it just all over the place? Uh, no, it's very specific because the people that will devote that kind of time, they're, they're, they're real fans, right? And so most of it's, it, it's, it, it, it revolves around what happened uh, when um, uh, Han and Giselle, you know, left it before we ended, before she died, basically, mm -hmm. right? Um, so like in between, like where, where were they? Were they in oh, Thailand? Yeah. So there were things like they're in Thailand, they, they were trying to escape, and then, you know, they, you know they, something happened, like from the past came in, and then... You know, that's why Giselle and Han had to go back into it. That's cute. Yeah. People wanting to live in the happy moment. Yeah, of those they, like, they had a baby, and then there's like something that happened there. Wow. And then, you know, um, and, and so there's a lot of it is like very romantic, yeah. but then it gets dark because like somebody has to die. Like Giselle dies, Han loses it. Like, and then like does Han, you know, Han go into like John Wick territory, right? Where he just goes mm -hmm. dark mm -hmm. and he has to just mm -hmm. take everybody out, right? Like he wants to. And then even even Ray Saram had a great idea that we had taken walks for months to and flush out a a possible like you know a prequel mm -hmm. or spinoff of like where Han and Giselle would be right. We would, we would walk from your old place in Brentwood, yeah, right, and then we would walk all the way to Santa Monica. But Six miles without you telling me where we're gonna go all the way to Santa Monica. <laughs> and I remember you telling me about the Jason Statham thing. And you're like, yeah. In like a later movie, Justin said he really wants Statham to come in. He's the one who killed on. And I remember I love like secrets. Like for me, I don't enjoy like, oh, hey, everyone, this is the secret. I like being able to go like, you don't know shit. <laughs> so oh, you mean you love uh, preserving the secret? Yeah, I love so like knowing it. something other yes. people don't. And so when you told me that, I was like, that's fucking nuts. I wonder when that's going to happen. And so seeing it in Furious 6 was very bittersweet because it was like, you told me this a long time ago and it's happening exactly like you said, but then also it seemed to mark the end, your end. of Han. Yeah. 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 So, so I guess this can, we can kind of segue into the end of Han. And so this vigil that you created or these, oh. these festive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So where did that come okay, from? So yeah. I'm not alone in um, my love for Fast and Furious, and specifically Tokyo Drift. Um, I have a lot of friends who are uh, fans and uh, filmmakers. A lot of filmmakers love this franchise, and uh, journalists too, who, together with uh, my group of one of my groups of friends, 
I used to throw an annual Fast and Furious barbecue, mm -hmm. celebrating all things Fast and Furious. Um, and we would time them to the release of the films, so the last several films. Uh, but by the time we got to the third one, which the second one, the first one was called Fast and Furious Barbecue, something like that. Um, the second one was called Too Fast, Too Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> the third one was obviously called Fast and Furious colon Barbecue Drift. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And for that one, we also made it the Han Solo Memorial Barbecue. Yeah. Um, and so we recreated. I know I said I wasn't like one of the weird fans before, <laughs> but uh, it did recreate the, from yeah. the screenshot of Han's in canon funeral, recreated the memorial <laughs> photo yeah. at his funeral, yeah. adorned with white flowers, <laughs> and I stuck it on a stand uh, yeah. uh, to greet everybody at that particular barbecue. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of people in LA in, in my life who also love this character in these movies. But we haven't had one since Fast 8 came out. Um, and also since Fast 8 came out, I have made a rule that no matter what, Jason Statham is not welcome at this particular barbecue. Much respect for him as a person, an actor, but uh, until there is justice for Han in this universe, I can't in good conscience welcome him into my uh, family barbecue. So after this movie comes out, if it all <laughs> works out, will you like extend like an invitation? Absolutely. If I see Justice for Han, then Deckard Shaw's... Come on. <laughs> he's fine. Okay. He'll be fine. Awesome. We'll see. So Fast 9. Yeah. Now, in this point of time, we know that you are back in this franchise, which yeah. is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. How did that happen? Uh, well, before we go to that, oh. answer that I, I want to, I, I do want to say something. Mm. Um, uh, you know, when I saw pictures of your vigil and I saw that, that reef with the, the memorial thing. Um, Did you get super weirded out? No, well, because I, you know, I heard about you and I've, I think I've read things, right? And I've seen you at certain events, but I mean, we never spoke. Like, we're never, you know, we never sat down for coffee. Like, yeah. we never hung out. Like... And so, and, and, and so at first I was like, that's, that's interesting. There's like, there, I guess there are these fans. And then it, 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 I got, I got really kind of, um, I don't, I don't know if emotional is the word. It wasn't emotional because I don't know you, right? I didn't know you, right? Um, and this sounds hokey, but it felt like I had a cousin or like a <laughs> sister somewhere that was just like sending me this message and then like a bottle, it's like, just keep your chin up, man. That was it, that's the way I saw it, I was, I, from afar. Yeah. And that's why when I, when the fast thing happened, right, fast nine, I felt like I had to reach out and call you, right? Because I felt like there was some, like, you know, anytime I feel like giving up, and I'm not, I didn't, I, I, didn't, I don't put my whole career around, you know, Han, but it did symbolize hope for me, like, if this doesn't work, then we have no hope. There's no way I'm gonna actually have a career if a character like th this doesn't work, doesn't propel into opportunities as an actor, right? Like, the re Hollywood just won't accept mm -hmm. it, right? And so I felt like you were giving me like this, like this lifeline in a way. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah. I, and again, I'm, it's not just me. It's like I know. Everybody who's ever gone to one of my Fast and Furious barbecues has that same love for what you created. Yeah. And like there are people who like there's a filmmaker named Ben David Grabinski who's a close friend of mine who also was a co-host of this barbecue. There's a journalist named Jermaine Lucier who has some incredible Han character art on his walls at home. You know, th this character is specifically celebrated by so many different people across this community who are still rooting to see him, you know, resurrect, thrive yeah, yeah, in a yeah, way, yeah, you know, yeah. because I mean, it, it doesn't happen for every character. Yeah. It doesn't happen for every franchise either. Yeah. So what you did connected and resonated with a lot of people. 
not just across the world, but here, you know, in the industry. Yeah. And it's fun to celebrate that. And yeah. I'm really glad that you didn't think that we were super creepy no, doing that. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, to answer your question of how, like, you know, what was it like, or how did it happen when I went back? Yeah. Um, you know, Justin, you know, because we're friends and we're attached to the hips, you know, he was always kind of, we'd always talk about the possibilities of it coming back, you know, him coming back. but. You know, we're realists and, you know, we don't want to go into Hokieville. You know, you want to, you want to respect the fans, you want to respect the timeline, and respect the world. Bye! Hi. See ya! Hi. Oh, that's, that's my wife, Jen. Hi! Hi. Nice, Hi, nice, nice to meet you! Nice to meet you! Alright, so they know that it's my garage, so we can break like that. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is literally Sung's garage, so they're, they're going to the store. Uh, um, so where was I? Uh, yeah, so, you know, he, we would talk about it, and then, um, and then he left the franchise, right? So yeah. from seven and eight, there were different directors, right? And um, after seven, after the whole thing with Paul, uh, at least I'll speak for myself, I was okay never coming back to the franchise again. I felt like, do, do I need to be part of that, do I need to revisit that because, um, you know, Paul was a very special person, we had a very special friendship and um, he's one of the people on the cast that really, you know, taught me things, um, you know, behind the camera, how to deal with a lot of the things that come with being a part of this franchise, being an actor in Hollywood, um, how to try to keep your feet on the ground um, and, um, you know, there was I mean, there was just a lot of, I guess, um, you know, things that just weren't settled yet, you know, so to go back and revisit that, I, I felt like I, didn't, I never needed to do that again. I re really did. So the idea of it, of, of going back to fast was like almost repulsive, you know, I was almost offended by hearing that, like, we think I need to go back that, to that for us. Like, I don't need to squeeze any more juice from that lemon, it's almost like exploiting it, right? Exploiting Paul. Um, and then, you know, time heals, you know? And then you, you, things kind of turn into like, you know, maybe the franchise exists and the fans need it to exist. And, you know, that's how we respect Paul's memory. Um, and I think if it wasn't for Justin, you know, the idea of Han coming back, I'd be like, nah, I don't think that's even smart to go into that territory. It's disrespectful for the fans because I think we have like one shot like if this thing doesn't work right then we've really disrespected everything that you've done and all the other fans have done and that wish for um, and you know we're just kind of spitting in their face so um, I think I hope I hope what Justin and I did in nine um, you know properly brings Han back for the right reasons and respects the, you know, respects the fans and respects the timeline and respects what Paul left behind. So I hope it all works out because it could blow my, it up in my face. So it's very bittersweet. It was great to see everybody, you know, I think everyone's gotten older. Um, and so people are settled into their skin more compared to when we we're younger. That just happens naturally. Um, trauma, these kind of things that happen. Um, you think it's like it only happens in Hollywood and then you go, yeah, yeah we're part of this whole Hollywood story. Um, and then, um, you know, and I'm just older. Like, so my value system going back, what was important was totally changed. So I was like, oh, how fitting that I'm 47 and I'm coming back to play Han, right? And it's not, this, it's, it's not a flashback Han, it's like Han today. What would he be like today and why, what's his cadence? And, I think if you were to ask me five years ago to play him, I was like, I wouldn't be able to do it. But things in my life have changed. Like, you know, my life has completely changed from five years ago. The things that I felt like were important in my life have no meaning to me in life anymore. Um, so I feel like I'm more sure-footed. Um, you know, I feel like I'm more comfortable with who I am. So I, that it's easier for me to play this new, or this rendition of Han, which, um, you know, I feel very proud and I feel lucky that the timing worked out to be able to play this version, you know, so. You mentioned that you and Justin had been batting around ideas for how you'd come back. Was, 
the general idea that you talked about over the years pretty much what we see? No. No? None of it. None of it. None of it. I mean, think, think about the idea that you and I threw around, right? It's like, <laughs> it, it, the thing is, it, it could all work, but this, this, this was, um, yeah, this was uh, all him. Wait, Justin? What was, what was the idea that you guys came up with? Our idea was like, I was, I think Han... It was like before he met Giselle. Vin and Giselle. Giselle, yeah. And he was like hiding out. And I remember there was like this, the no, whole wait. set piece, huh? Wait, it was after, but, but no, it was because Giselle died. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was post-Giselle. Yeah. And it was like, there's a scene where you're like backing out of a really narrow <laughs> alley. And I was like, okay, that's the only action sequence I can think of. Yeah. It was really small. Would that have been a metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it could have been. I like that. Han on his, on his emo walkabout after such a big loss. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, where would he be? Mm -hmm. or where would he go? Right? Mm -hmm. Did you pitch like a prequel over the years to anybody? Yeah, I pitched it to Justin. Pitched it to anybody that would listen. Um, and it, it's... <laughs> That's why it's surprising that we're here today, that Han is actually alive, because it's like, you know, it, like I felt like I was just screaming my lungs out, going, no, man, there's, people love Han, people love Han, people love And God bless, you know, data, God bless the internet, because, um, you know, I remember my agents had to, you know, show data, right? Oh. Uh, to, like, yeah. Th these people are talking about yeah. bringing Han back, how, would they, to show that people want want it yeah and that you know where you know why this 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 character is beloved look at all this fan fiction look at this fan art look at look at look what you were doing look at the <laughs> justice for han thing right so it was it, it kind of like almost present you know a care a beloved character on a silver platter that they were just like ignoring and that kind of goes into like i was you know like at first when you when you you were so upset about the decker cha thing mm -hmm. i asked myself i said if she was an Asian American, would she have a problem with with this character's death being overlooked? And that's a question I want to ask you. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I would say I know a lot of Asian Americans who do have an issue with that, or they're disappointed. Mm. Um, and it's more to do with the impact of Han's death and therefore his life feeling diminished, right? Do you agree? Um, but I have a lot of friends that I know who are not Asian who feel the exact same way. Mm. They may not feel the, the same personal um, uh, connection to what Han represented in terms of seeing oneself on screen, like Racer M shared. Um, but they have this connection to that character, even though they're not Asian, and they they have the same perspective on what happens to the legacy of that character within this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So the attachment is not because they're they they look alike, right? It's I don't think so. I, I'm sure that's the case for some people. Yeah. Um, and I think that's very valid and and probably very strong um, connection for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and also it's a it's a franchise that, as you mentioned before, is arguably the most inclusive global franchise that we have right now. And it means a lot to see characters of color honored within that franchise. Yeah. 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 What does that feel like for you to, to, to like process the, the idea that Han as a character not just means a lot to fans who like Fast and Furious, but to Asian Americans who, mm. who saw, felt something uh, additional to, to just, you know, loving that character. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's the reason I went into acting. You know, as a kid, oh. growing up in the South, I grew up in Georgia, and I was invisible, no voice. Like, I was in Korean, I was just a chink or a Jap. Um, I didn't know martial arts, so I had, you know, no one feared me. I had no use, I had no purpose. I wasn't, I wasn't good at math, so I couldn't tutor anybody. You know, no one could cheat off of me. I, didn't have, I wasn't rich, had nothing to offer. I wasn't super athletic. There was nothing, right? Um, 
I, I wanted a voice. I wanted to say something. I wanted to, to, to like, you know, leave a mark on this earth, right? And, and I look around, I would look around and go, the athletes have a voice, politicians have a voice, you know, beautiful people, look, um, famous people. And I looked around and I was like, man, I, I don't want to be Bruce Lee. I go, that's great, but I love what he did. I, I felt like if, if a black dude could wear your face on a t-shirt, that means you're pretty cool. Like you hit pop culture. And the mm -hmm. fact that Bruce Lee, like I would see black dudes wear Bruce Lee, you know, Bruce Lee t-shirts, I was like, wow, he made a massive impact in redefining what a masculine Asian male is, right? In pop culture. You were like um, hip hop? Huh? Hip hop. And too? hip hop. Well, okay. back in when, back in the seventies when he was alive and Bruce oh. Lee was alive, he redefined it all, right? Mm -hmm. With martial arts, but martial arts wasn't a stereotype then. He, he introduced it to be this cool, almost superpower, right? Right. He's the reason why um, nunchaku were outlawed, codified into a fear of Asians, basically, yeah. because a bunch of like young people in major cities. Of all of all ethnicities, were um, learning it or trying to learn it because they saw him in movies. Yeah, and it, he it was it, you know the conversation is not, hey the the, the you know, skinny dorky Asian dude. It's like yo man, you better be careful Asian dude, kick your ass. He's like Bruce Lee. He knows that chop suey stuff, right? And I don't want to be. I never wanted to be another Bruce Lee, right? But I didn't want to have a voice, and I felt like, well, what? Are, what am I? Like, what is? What is my thing? What's my? What's my shtick, right? And if, I felt like I was always kind of like an outlier, kind of like the underdog, like kind of this brooding dude. And I, I always, you know, I, I associated to like westerns, like to John Wayne's, to James Dean's, to Paul Newman's, right? You know, they, they were like, you know, they were more like. Uh, character types that I identified with because that was my pop culture identity growing up in the South, right? And then um, when I w went into acting, I realized, you know, being tall, being like this idea of what a leading male is, doesn't, did not serve me in Hollywood because that category did not exist for Asian males. It was males. not a box that people could put yeah. you in. Yeah. You yeah. don't know martial arts? Like, and what are you? Like, you don't look like menacing enough to be a Yakuza guy, right? You kind of have nice skin and you know, like it's not like, you know, it doesn't work, right? And I'm like, where do I fit? I'm not a character actor, right? Uh, so it's like, there's just no opportunity. And then when we did Better Luck like Tomorrow, it was this first director, because Justin is Asian American, growing up in Southern Cali, very similar age, similar, you know, origin, um, identity issues. And then so he looked at me not as an Asian, he looked at me as a quintessential American kid. And that's why Han drives a, a Mustang. That's why. Han looks more James Deany, not like some K-pop, you know, idol, and that's what you know Asian American kids, you know, look like, working class, right? Um, and so that's where I was like, okay, maybe I can start kind of defining the brand here. It's like, what is it? It's like it's the every dude, it's the every American dude that just happens to have an Asian body, right? Asian face, right? And it all came full circle when I went back home, right? A lot of the fast movies were actually shot in Georgia. You know, I spent so many years trying to leave Georgia, but um, because of the rebate, a lot of the movies are shot in Atlanta there. So we were there shooting, and um, my cousin that grew up in Georgia with me, um, he actually looks like me. He's just a, like a heavier version of me, but people thought we were twin brothers. He stayed in Georgia, I left. And it, so we would go fishing um, we like to go deep fish, fishing, so he knew a spot in Destin, Florida, but we had to drive through Alabama. And he was telling me, he's like, hey, Sung, don't, uh, we have to stop and get gas, but when we go out, don't, don't talk to anybody, don't look at anybody in their eyes. This is Alabama, and this is still kind of old country. And, um, you know, we grew up in Georgia, so he, he goes, you know what I'm talking about, man, so just, you know, just, just lay low. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm offended, you know, I'm like going, man, my... I felt like my cousin, in a way, was like, 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 he was castrated, like, because he never left Georgia. So he's like almost, he, he was like, he was like, he was desensitized to those things. And I, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was a little affected by it, going, wait, why, why do I have to kind of bow down to some, some dude at a gas station because we're in Alabama, like, because because the color of my skin. I was like, nah, I don't, I don't know about this. So I went in, and I see this dude, you know. Um, 
standing across the counter and he looks up and he gives me this double take and all of a sudden he's like, it's Han, it's Han, it's Han from Tokyo Drift. And, and at first I'm like, uh, the excitement, you know, is, 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 it, is, is he happy or is he angry, right? And he was so genuinely excited to see me. He's calling his mom, he's like, hey, Han's here from Tokyo Drift. Oh, you got to come over here. You got to. It's the Chinese guy from Tokyo Drift. You know, you can't even be offended because the enthusiasm is there. And he didn't see me as an Asian dude. He saw me as a guy he grew up with, a guy that he wanted to share his car stories with. He wanted, you know, he wanted me to take a ride in his in, in, in his truck. He wanted to tell me his love affair with all the cars that one day he's gonna buy. And his favorite movie in the whole world was Tokyo Drift. You know, and I'm thinking a lot of other great movies out there, but thank you, you know. Um, but that's when I realized that film and the character that I, that I had the privilege to play, um, in a way, did what Bruce Lee did. You know, it's like Bruce Lee, you know, allowed the idea of an Asian male to be masculine and cool and deadly and almost superhuman. And Han allowed people to see an Asian male as somebody that you want at the picnic table that you just want to have a conversation with. Somebody that, you know, it's just easy to hang out with. A mentor, older brother, right? Just a cool friend. And I was like, that is as impactful as what Bruce Lee did. And it's like, I was like, man, this is pretty awesome to be able to share it with my cousin. You know? So, Beautiful. that's what, yeah. Thank you. So, Fast 9, what do you hope those Han fans take away from what they're going to see in it? Well, I hope they, I hope, first I hope, you know, I, I, I hope they enjoy seeing everybody together. Because, you know, the, the, the theme and the, the beauty of Fast has always been, you know, the number one theme that's always worked for me, I think, has been like this, this family thing. And I think as the, the you know, the movie's been going on, like the franchise has gone bigger, like that theme kind of has been a little dissipated, if, if you will. And I think it's, it's gone back to that, right? That's like the core, like, you know, storyline. And so I think it's like almost like a family reunion in a way, like, you know, what the characters used to be like, right? Um, together. And I love films that, that are able to laugh at themselves, right? Like, look, like, you gotta have fun at these movies. Like, fast, fast, a fast film, you have to have fun. You can't be walking out and if it's too deep and you like got emotionally too invested, it's like, we did not do our job, mm -hmm. right? There's the bits and pieces, but you know, it's almost like a roller coaster ride for two hours, right? You have to, and then you have to feel connected and you have to want to see the people on that roller coaster again. And then we're good, right? And I think it has all that. And you need to laugh, right? Like, I think seven and eight, some of the laughter was, you know, it, how can you laugh? Did right? you go to the theater to see eight? I did. On like opening day? Mm, I think on the third day I went. Is that like like walking into your ex's wedding? Does it feel weird? Uh, yeah, because you could look, you know, I'm an actor, we're emotional people. So you go through a slew of emotions. You go jealousy, envy, bitterness, right? And then, you know, then like insecurity. And then, then you go, did I do something wrong? Like what's wrong with me? Um, then you miss people. Then you get angry and you're like, hey, you know, it's like you guys left without me, right? All these things, right? So it's really like what one feels like when you are no longer part of a family, right? But, you know, it's not like I kicked out, I just died. <laughs> it's, a story, but it's a testament to like how powerful this family is and they keep bringing me back. So it's like, it's, it's, you know, now it's, 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 it's this kind of like really endearing relationship everybody has with each other. It's not, I don't think, the, the, you know, it's, there's no competitive, like, you know, uh, energy like we used to have when we were younger, you know. Um, it, people are, it's, it daily feels like a family reunion and then we go and play pretend, right? And people are getting older, so you see it too. So it's, you know, it's, things are a little slower, right? More, more time at the craft service. <laughs> 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 More darker colors to, you know, hide body parts, right? Isn't that as thin as it used to be, right? <laughs> so, a lot of Hollywood secrets, right? Uh, yeah. So, I think we can end it here. I think we talked a lot. Jen, thank you so much. 
Thank you're you for awesome. having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, you know, thank you for everything you're doing. I know you don't want to take credit, so Asian of you, but um, <laughs> I, I, I have to say thank you because um, not only does it give, you know, me to, to some, uh, not, not only does it give me an opportunity to get to know you, but then it truly is important because you gave me hope. It's, 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 and sometimes it's all we need, Jen. Well, that's you know? very beautiful to hear. I'm happy to have put that out in the world in, in my own way. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Racer M. Thanks, Racer M. All right. Well, that's it for today's Sun's Garage. So, till next time. See you later. <laughs>